Okay, so here we're gonna start looking at some of the other nerves that are present, and we're gonna work in a rostral to caudal fashion. The first nerves that you probably notice are these two large kind of branches you see here. Both of those are actually part of the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve is a branch of the maxillary nerve, along with, if you move that infraorbital nerve out of the way, and the arteries out of the way, you will see this large nerve deep to it, which is going to be the pterygopalatine nerve. The pterygopalatine ganglion is found much more deep under here and is quite difficult to see. So really the big ones I want you to focus on are the infraorbital nerve here and then the pterygopalatine nerve. The infraorbital nerve will run with the infraorbital artery. And as you see here, the pterygopalatine nerve will run very close with the descending palatine artery. Next, we're gonna look at some of the branches of the mandibular nerve, with the first one being this branch here that we see, again, would be running with the artery if it was still intact. We see this nerve running down towards the area of the cheek. That will be the buccal nerve. As we continue in a caudal fashion, the next nerve we will get to is this here, which is going in towards the tongue. That's going to be the lingual nerve. Here we see a nerve that has been cut, and that's because the mandible has been removed. This is going to be the inferior alveolar nerve, which if we look here, we can see the inferior alveolar nerve still intact, running into the mandibular foramen along with the inferior alveolar artery. Let me get this label out of the way. Inferior alveolar nerve along with the artery. Finally, the caudal most of these nerves is going to be this very small nerve running right down towards your mylohyoid muscle. And that's going to be your mylohyoideous nerve or mylohyoid nerve. As we continue, the next very large nerve we're going to come to is this large nerve that we've already talked about that runs with this artery. So that is going to be the hypoglossal nerve running with the lingual artery. As we continue, what we're gonna do is kind of flip the head to the medial aspect and start working on some of these nerves that are found here. So what has been removed, we've removed some of the muscles from the base of the skull here, allowing us to see this kind of collection of structures here. And we're also right around the area of where your internal carotid is going to be leaving the external carotid. So the first nerve we're going to see is actually quite lateral. That's going to be this nerve right here that is going down into the area of the pharynx. That's going to be the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is cranial nerve nine, a mixed nerve. Next, we see this structure that we've seen already in the course. This very large nerve structure is the vagosympathetic trunk. As the vagosympathetic trunk runs cranially, once it gets to the skull, we actually see this is the separation where the sympathetic trunk leaves the vagus. And then this large bulbous structure here is actually the cranial cervical ganglion. This bulbous structure just caudal to that is going to be the distal ganglion of cranial nerve 10 or the distal ganglion of the vagus nerve. So here we actually see the vagus nerve joining with the sympathetic trunk to create the vagosympathetic trunk. So as I just alluded to, the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10 Cranial nerve 11 has been cut right here, but would be coming out the same area as the vagus and going into some of these neck muscles. That would be cranial nerve 11, or the accessory nerve. Here's the accessory nerve from this animal. The accessory nerve, again, cranial nerve 11, innervates COTS, C-O-T-S, so your clidocephalicus, omotransversarius, trapezius, and sternocephalicus from the first portion of the course.